Well, I'm uh, delighted to say that joining me on the Godcast is Mark. Now, Mark's not a, a famous face. He's not somebody you will know, but he's become a friend of mine over the last year. He's been using uh, the food bank here and he's been coming to breakfast uh, for well over a year now, haven't you, Mark? Yes. So this is Mark, Mark in Burnley, lad, yeah? Yes, I'm Burnley, through and through. How about did you grow up, Mark? I, I grew up at uh, 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 Cleveland, yeah. Right at the beginning, and then we moved to Lebanon Street next to Turf Moor. Okay, and that was my family home for yeah. many years. And you're okay with rec- this being yes. recorded and shared with people you wanted to people yes, to yes, hear your yes, yes. your story. And so, what was life like growing up in Clevedon? What was that like for you? It was beautiful. What's your memories of of that? I left there. We left there when I was, I think, I was six year old. We moved to Lebanon Street. In Burnley. Were you part of a big family? No, I was a really small family. Mum, my dad, and my sister. Okay. And school days, what were school days like for you? Were they were they okay or troubled? It's quite troubled. <laughs> tell us why what? Tell us why. Well, we did a lot of uh, blue sniffing at school. I had a girlfriend, I won't say her name, but I had a girlfriend who uh, my father used to own an hardware store. So I used to get three tins of uh, Evo stick. Okay. And that was just a teenage thing with it, you yes, and your mates were doing yes, it? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Okay. And was that what you remember of that, Mark? Was that, a, was that a good experience, you know, getting high off sniffing glue? What was that like? I'm afraid it was a, it was a soldier thing. You had to survive. You have to have friends, and you have to have friends who have new friends, and so you just it was sort of a snowball effect, and kept going and going and going. Yeah. Did your parents ever find out that you were? Yes. Yeah, of course they did. Yeah. And were they? How were they about that? Not that happy. I was allowed to uh, smoke cannabis in my bedroom. Okay. When I was about eight, seventeen-year-old, I think it was. Yeah. Right. And what, do you mind me asking, were your parents smoking? No. 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 But they, they knew that you were? Yeah, my parents were drinkers. Okay. So how, how old would you have been, Mark, when you started sniffing glue? Oh, 13. Okay. And then you moved on to smoking dope, did you? Yeah. And then next level to that one as well. What was, uh, what was dope doing for you? Why, why were you smoking dope? What was the reason? It weren't even it weren't even weed then, it was just it was leaf and rocket it was called. It weren't the weed you have nowadays. It was completely different. Nowadays you get up to 17% THC in your weed. Then it was like two percent. But now because it's all got it's all changed now. That's why my nickname's bubblegum. I used to I know it's probably a recall, but I used to grow the best weed in Berlin. <laughs> okay. So, so what, were you addicted to weed at 17? No, I did to other things, though. So, just talk, talk us through that. So, you know, at any point, Mark, did you think, I'm going down a road, I shouldn't be going down here? Or were you, were you kind of comfortable with what you were doing? No, that every week I thought that. Every week I thought that, I'm going on the wrong road. There'd be a no entry sign at the bottom of this road. But you went down it? Yes. yes. So why, why did you go down it? What was the reason that you went down it? Maybe it was lack of uh, education and lack of uh, intelligence even. And I, I, I'm, I, I nearly swore them, but I won't swear. I, I'm, I'm not a thick person, me. I know. I know that. And I've got, I've got these T-shirts. Layer after layer after layer. I've done that. Now I won't do it again. But I do do. You won't do it again. Oh, you will do do. All this time we're talking right now, I, I didn't drink alcohol at all. But I've stopped all this. And now I'm an alcoholic. Were you, were you good at school? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. What, what subjects were you good at? Oh, uh, what, or what did you enjoy? Physics, history. And when, when you left school, did, did you go to college or did you, did you get no, work? What did you I, do? I left school. I left school when I was in the fourth year. Okay. And what did you do? 
And when I went to work at Elizabeth Mills furniture shop, yeah, I found a week. Were you happy there? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I just finished work and I got to youth club. I was a bunch of youth club. And and your and your circle of friends at that time. What was your what was your circle of friends like? I've still I've still got a lot of them. Yeah. So they've all been on the journey with you. No. No. <laughs> no. And they, they've gone on to have got, careers of they and stuff. Yeah, they've gone. I'm going to say they've got big families because they have, but they've got good families. And oh, we've got I've, I've got I've got friends who were. There. The females are the breadwinners, and yeah. the males are the housekeepers. Right. And the males, when I say the housekeepers, the big fellas, and they're hard fellas and all. And I don't make sense, but that's what they prefer to do. Mm. Mark, Mark I'm, in, I'm interested to know you went from being just a user of dope to a dealer of dope. Was this the was this the entrepreneur in you? Was this the guy that thought I could make a few quid here? That thought, yeah, that, is that what be. it was about? Yes, yeah, of course it was. Yeah. But, but then I went to next level after that. Well, let's just stick on the dope. So were you, were you, how much were you making? Were you making decent money when you were dealing? I could have a 30, 40 ounce underneath my bed. When, when we were the, when we were the bruncher. Bags open, 40 ounce minimum. Or drying out a little bit. Yeah. And you, did you get caught dealing? Yeah, but not not weed. Okay, so you see, so I guess dealing weed, you see the op the money for a bit of dosh, but then you see the potential of making more money, do you? Yes, in a breath. Yeah. So you moved on to what? B. Sorry. B. B. What's that? Tell people what that is. That's heroin. So how did that come about? Did, did you, were you sought out to be a dealer or did you seek people out who could get you the gear? No, I sought out to be an easy touch. Okay. And these, these people that sought you out, describe, don't tell us who they were, but describe them to us. What were they like? Wank. Were they, Wank. Were they intimidating people? No. No? no, no, no. So you, you so how does it work then? You say I'll become your dealer. No, 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 no. Tell us. So will you do this for me, please? Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go and do this room. And that's the time when I got uh, I got I got caught on the way back from somewhere. And were you getting good money for dealing? No. Not at all. No. So he was getting all the money? Not me. I know that much. Not me. And so you got arrested? Yep. And what happened? I got four years. You got sent to prison for four years. Where yeah, did well, you Yeah. Forest Bank. Yeah. And that was your first time in prison, was it? Yes, first ever. And what was that like? Was that was that a scary time for you? Or were you kind of no, it wasn't tough enough right. to stick it out? Yeah, it was, yeah. Did quite well. Could you look after yourself? Yes, yeah. Then I could, yeah. Not now. <laughs> and and did that dealing go on? In, in did that that drug use go on inside the prison? I, I, I did my own my own land then when we were in jail. What were you doing? I was selling subject texts and spies. So this would and what, what how, how how old would you have been when this was happening, Mark? This was this was quite recently. Say seven years ago. Okay. And when you're in prison and you know you've you've done You've been caught red-handed, and you, you're you're paying, uh, you're serving your time at a Majesty's pleasure. Pleasure. Are you are you thinking anything about regret in this? No. What are you think? What are you actually thinking about? I'm I'm a fool. Go on. I think I'm a fool. I've got all thinking. I'm a fool. For what? For uh, taking this blame for everybody and getting no recom. Come sense whatsoever and um, nothing whatsoever. Yeah. So you were getting no money, financial reward, mm -hmm. and you were taking the blame for it as well. Yeah. I, I yes, I earned my own money. I were in jail. Was there any? Did you ever think in your mind I need to grasp these people up? Was that ever a, a potential? Mm, no, that happened. 
What would have happened if you had? I don't know. I'm down back to the contemplate today. Do you think somebody would have hurt you? No, I don't know. Thank no. you very much. No. So were you were you a big player, Mark, or were you would you be called small fry in terms of dealing? What 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 it's funny because the front page of the Bill and Express, when I got sentenced, it said uh, Bill is top drug kingpin has been arrested. I thought you were taking the possession of me. You never saw yourself as that. Did he? I know because I weren't. I really weren't, Alex. Not a chance. <laughs> and when you, when you come out of prison, yeah. What, what's the first thing that happens in Mark's life when you come out? Went, went to pub. You went to Liverpool. Pub? Or to pub. <laughs> you went to pub. <laughs> and a game of pool. And, and got pissed. Yeah. Were you, were you drinking heavily up to this point? No, you have an alcohol when I did you jail. Yeah, okay. So let's just talk about that a little bit. So can you, can you remember the first time when you thought, I'm an alcoholic? when you recognised in your own mind that I can't survive without alcohol? No, no, it's a bit of a weird one, it's because I never used to drink. She takes take drugs. And when I were in rehab once, right, for my drugs, my, my therapist, when you go to meetings every morning, and you have to introduce yourself, say I'm Mark, and I'm an addict. I say, no, you're not, Mark. You're an addict, an alcoholic. I say, I don't drink. How can I be an alcoholic? But trust me, it'll come back to you this. You did. I stopped taking drugs. So we, in terms of drug taking, you were taking heroin yourself, were you? Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. It was, it was methadone, man, drug of choice. Yeah. So um, some people... You know, some people might be thinking, well, if he's an addict, that what, what led you to the bottle? What led you to booze? What what was it? Was it just something else? Yes, yes. Yeah, as long as you get high. And what is it what is it that, that drugs and drink were taking you away from? A real a reality. Definitely. And what what was your reality like? What was it? Was it horrible? Were you not shit? Tell us about it. I've been in a coma for about four weeks. A real coma, not an excuse for a real coma. Why did that happen? I got beat up in Preston. Preston Prison? No, no. Just in town? In, in, well, I used to live at Northumberland Flats. Right. They've been knocked down now. I took that on 14th floor. And you've been drinking? No. <laughs> they just got into a fight? Yeah. No, they, they couldn't jump in there, two of them. You just got jumped? Yeah. And a fire. Couldn't tell no lock on my door. And what were you drinking? Just anything? Then over there, then. Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't drink alcohol at all. No. I was on methadone and uh, volume and mazapan. And how much were you spending a week on that? On, on drugs. I used to get, uh, I used to get most of it free on prescription. Right. I'd go to chemist twice a day. In the morning for your, uh, your volume and your methadone, and then at uh, tea time, you get some other part of sleeping trouble. And, and this addiction, which ultimately led to alcohol as well, what, did this lead to other crime? Were you, were you, were you shoplifting? Or were you getting involved? Well, shop, shoplifting, well, yes, I was shoplifting. I was shoplifting. Yeah. And we, do you get quite prolific at that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to call me a professional shoplifter. And that's not a clever thing to say, but... And where would you do that? Just around town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got caught for that, I guess? Quite often. Yeah, quite, quite many times, yes. Quite many times. Yeah, it's quite a story, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So the boot, when the booze kicked in, what, what, what were you... How much were you drinking? Or... Well, I had a, uh, had a rule. Yeah. My rule started off was, I, I won't have no kind of special brew until six o'clock at tea time. No. And then it went down to five o'clock, and it went down to three o'clock, and it went down to 12 o'clock. Before I know it, I'm waking up, I'm not going to yeah. and, that, and that's where you are now, isn't it? 
Iya, apa semangat? Kalau apa semangat? Arek jam segini masih ngomong. Tell us about your day on the general day. Well, I wake up between uh, five and six in the morning. Profusely sweating. I'll get to toilet as quick as I can. I have an accident. People don't understand that alcohol is the worst addictive drug in the entire world. I think it's available at all times. No, so what time is it day? You got to gather it at 20, 24 hours and go. This place will be boy, you've got 24 hours. Get beer whenever you want. So you get up. Yeah. You go to Lou. Yeah. Do you, well, do you eat breakfast? <laughs> no. What do you do? And have a can. Can of what? 9%. 9%. Mm. And what does that do? Does that, does that just like, Makes me normal. It just normalizes you a bit. It really does, yes, it does, yeah. So you're not you're not drunk at that point. You no, 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 you normalize. It's very rare I get drunk. I don't get drunk. I'm trying to start top you off this thing and so it's just yeah, it's like having a cigarette. Yes, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. So you have a, a can of nine percent, yeah. and then how long will it be before you have another can? So half an hour. And does that go on all day? Yeah. Apart from when it gets to later nights, and then I'll, I can I can stop drinking. But then the, the sooner I stop drinking, the earlier in the morning I start feeling rough. When I say rough, I mean like you know, I have fits and things like that. I've had fits and that, sweat dripping off my face and in my hands. And people are, are not daft; they're going to notice you. You shy now? Did you get I, that? I thought it was a friend, or a so-called friend. What happened there? I, I stopped him and his brother from fighting. Yeah. And he ended up turning on me. And Mark, when you, you know, when you, when you stop at, at night and your head hits the pillow, what, what, what are you thinking don't about? Do, my head doesn't hit the pillow. It <laughs> doesn't? No, I, I, that's very rare, actually. So you're just in the armchair here or something? Or? No, no, I'm in the bed. I'm on, in the bed, but I don't sleep. I, uh, I, just, I just don't sleep at all. If I have an hour, an hour and a half, I'm happy. I'm over the moon. It's an hour. And, and how do you spend your days? Walking here, there and everywhere. I go to the bar shop a lot. A friend who owns it. And how many, um, how many proper true friends do you think you've got that you really can trust and rely on? Probably two or three. Two or three? Yeah. Are they, are they users? Are they addicts? No, or? no, 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 no. And you've got family? Got kids? Why are you shrugging? Okay. <laughs> I've got a between us between me and her, we've got 19 kids and grandkids. 19 twins. <laughs> What's your relationship like with your kids? My, my, my son's uh, my real son's in jail. HMP uh, Liverpool. My daughter's in New York. We're living in large. She's proper posh. My other daughter's in uh Called Brook. My mother and father are in Cleveland. They're in a big static caravan. It's money to in order to get in touch with them. I've been in touch with them for years. You haven't? No, years and years. Do you miss them? Yeah, of course. They're my, mom, my best friend. What stops you getting in touch with your mum and dad? I don't know, my, uh, I don't know. Mark, I've just noticed you've got a 9% behind your ear. Yes. Is that your, that's the old to your yeah, addiction? Yeah, three of us in Burnley had it, yes. It's just 9%, it was your special brew. So me, Aston and Tez, we all had it done. 
and you know what they did? Well, as tattoos done, they've lowered the alcohol content to 8.5. <laughs> We've all got nap percent on the next, we're fuming. <laughs> So when you when you think about your lad being in prison, what does that do to you? Is that is that difficult for you to deal with or no? He's a bit of a, a rapper. I think he's doing it on purpose. I don't know if you said yeah. you know it's gonna be their status. Yeah. yeah. And what about what about the future, Mark? Oh, yeah. What do you think about the future? Is your life just about existing? Oh, yes. He's a, he's a, he's a, it's not easy, is it? You, you, you and I have had some conversations I'm, where you've, you've said you feel like you're going under. I have, I've been trying a few times. I have done. Do you think you could ever get clean? No. If I did, I'd, I'd end up dying, I think. I think my body's... Uh, I got told when I was uh, 26 year old by Dr. Crumball, you'll, you'll never reach 30. I'm 55. I'm still being a soldier. I don't know a t-shirt off the line, but... Would you like to be clean? Mm, no. You not, I don't think so, no. Why? To say, like, if you stop drinking and smoking, you'll live another 15 years. But then I heard this in the background. Well, then the last 15 years of the piss bar. So that's the man's time right now, I think. Do you, do you think, feel like you've created a world that you can that what? manage? Yeah. You know, so I, I'm not saying, I, I, I don't mean say you're happy, but you've right. created a world that you can exist in. And that's the goal, is it, just to exist? Yeah, I think so, yes, at the moment, yeah. When was the last time you felt happy and content about life? Do you remember? Yeah. Be, uh, just over, uh, just under a year ago, I a friend who uh, got killed on his motorbike down Old Street. Yeah. Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, it's his anniversary on the... Uh, Next week, yeah, we're all going. I mean, I miss that midget old bastard so much. In life. And there's only we could call him, he was my bro. He was. But you were content in, in his relationship with you? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're bros, we're probably good friends, yeah. So Lewis died in a in a, a road accident uh, yeah. just before Christmas last year, and, and uh, everybody in, on the estate and uh, the local area was aware. And there's a big memorial coming up. Um, and you you've been homeless in your life. Yeah, of course, I was. Tell us about living without a home. Well, I'm saying homeless. I lived in a Tregana castle down in Cornwall, St. Ives, and it was a uh, it used to be a a cottage built in the, in the in the grounds of the castle, and some of the roof had been knocked in with the JCB, so no squash could win. That's boarded it all up. Made it perfect. Stopped in there for about a year. To to Ghana Castle. Hmm. And how do you find people are towards you? You know, when you are inebriated or you've been in been in a bit of a mess. Just, just oh, the, you know, that was a lot to me that. I get judged all the time. Tell me about being judged. I don't, don't mind me, and I don't mind. People can think of me what they want to think about me. I am what I am. Shall I be? Are you, are you a bad person? No, I'm definitely not a bad person, not that much. <laughs> Do you regret dealing drugs? Mm, no. 
Why, why don't you, some people will go, well, he's not, he's not asking for any forgiveness there. Why do you not, no, why do you not regret uh, dealing drugs? Because I have never dealt any drugs to anybody who didn't want them in the first place. That's as simple as that, I think. I, I, I put you on your back and said, here. No, I haven't. But you accept that drugs, well, you've said it yourself, alcohol is, yeah. is a terrible blight on society and, it and people. Yes, it is, definitely. Yeah. What, what would you, what, you know, if, um, if there was a way to stop it, what would you say? Is there, is there a way, you know, is it a case of stop the shops up in 24 hours? You know, uh, it's. Uh, I think. I think what you said is really interesting about booze because it is so. Sure. It's legal and it's so readily available. If you uh, stop owning the shops, so they can't have twenty-four hour alcohol consumption. All happened then is you get more burglary consumption. People are burgling shops and that, and they can't get no beer when they're alcoholics and they need it. Winter through, simple as that. That's all happened. Mm. And places that help you, what is there out there that help you? Well, uh, I, uh, I asked for help when I lived in Padium. I asked for help with my doctor, and he, he tried ringing up Inspire. And, the, and his doctor said to him, he said, he, I can tell you I'm to drink today. I can't smell alcohol or anything on him. But we'll tell him. Up to three weeks to ring, ring us back up, so we know he's dedicated to stop drinking. Well, I think after three weeks, you've stopped drinking. So, do you know what the doctor said? He said, I can't believe you, he's locked down there. He slumped the phone down, and he gave me prescriptions. To my delivery, to wear out well. Like. So for you to get rehab, you have to show a period of Yes, well, that uh, inspire, inspire, yes. Yeah. And what's, what's in recent, say in the last two years, Mark, what's the longest you've been, other than the night hours, what's the longest you've been without absolutely feeling I need a beer? Is it literally hours? Yeah, really literally. So you, th there is no prospect of you getting through 24 hours? No. Really? <laughs> well, I go out walking. And and any other services, you know, like mental health services? Is no, there... I'm, I've got mental health problems. I really think I had, but I am. Well, I, it's not that I don't think. I just think what well, you've been through, your life is... Oh, uh, yeah. Mark, you've got one of those extraordinarily beautiful faces that tells a thousand stories. <laughs> yeah, but it does now. Well, well, yeah, it did anyway, but, <laughs> you know. So what does the future hold? More of the same? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. No snowball effect, rolling, rolling. And you don't, you don't at this time. You don't feel like you want to get clean. So you say clean, that and that's off the booze. Yes, yeah, it's a totally different thing to me. When you say please. So yeah, yeah. But you, you'd like to get dry, or not? You don't. Nothing so no. <laughs> Is it because you? You're frightened of what that life might look like on the other side of alcoholism. No, because I don't want boredom. I don't want boredom. Yeah. You think you'd be bored? Yes, I do, yeah. I really do, Alex. Yes, I do. Yeah. And, and um, people who might watch this, particularly young people, you know, maybe students, who, uh, who um, think about booze and alcohol consumption, what, what would you say to young people about it? Oh, no, see, this is where the lines are crossing now between uh, drug addiction and alcoholism. Yeah, tell us. They actually cross over now, they do at some, some point. Yeah. And that's why you'll get, get rid of one. Yeah. And swap it for the other. But then in the outcome, it all ends up the same. You've got some crazy addiction. Right? Used to be in the 60s, every housewife was addicted to Valium. Yeah. They were giving them out of our sweets. 
Yeah. And then as soon as I start taking them, the winning one start having fits on floor and that. Not the volume. I will finish now then. It's funny we should be talking like this because I do actually need to go on a cat. <laughs> That's all right. Mark needs a beer. <laughs> Sorry, but, Joe. You know, Mark, we've we've got to know each other a little bit over the last year. Yes, and, and you're very well. You yeah. know, I think I think a lot of you. And I'm really grateful for you being honest and, and just telling us about your life and the experience of addiction. Mm. And um and thanks for coming on the Godcast. Thank you. God bless. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Peace out.